Hi grade 9 students, this is teacher Lester aka Zerless and I welcome you all to another fun and meaningful learning. Well today, you will be joining me to explore more about the cultural aspect of the Philippines in connection with physical education or PE. And this topic is discussed in quarter 3 of your module. So without further ado, let's get this discussion started. Our lesson for today is entitled Festival Dance. And yes, you heard it right, it's festival dance. And for us to be guided with our discussion for today, let us know the objectives of the lesson. First, undertake physical activity and physical fitness assessments. Second, execute the skills involved in the dance. Third, perform appropriate first aid for injuries and emergency situations in physical activity and dance settings. And last but not the least, involve yourself in community service to dance activities in the community. And now, let's go straight to the definition of festival dances. Well class, festival dances are cultural dances performed to the strong beats of percussion instruments by a community of people sharing the same culture, usually done in honor of a patron saint or in thanksgiving of a bountiful harvest. Class, these are the benefits of festival dancing or participation to festival dances. Let us consider that Luzon is now paving its way to join the country's festival of festivals which is done in the month of April called Aliwan Fiesta. Are you familiar with that? I hope so. So these are the benefits of festival dances. First, Filipinos do festivals primarily to celebrate. Of course, we do. Second, celebration of unity amidst the diversity of cultures. Third, celebration of industry bringing about a bountiful harvest. Fourth, crowd producing activity leading to upliftment of a community's economy due to its tourism and entertainment value. And lastly, attracts foreign and domestic tourists to visit a place eventually leading to the elevation of the Filipinas' quality of life. So class, those are the benefits of festival dancing. Isn't it exciting to deal with such lesson? To clear things out and to make everything simple for you, let us trim down the festival dances in the Philippines. There are actually two types of festival dances in the Philippines. These are the religious festivals and the secular festivals. Of course, let us first discuss religious festivals. Religious festival is a festival celebrated in honor of a certain religion icon. What do you think are the religious festivals in the Philippines? Can you name one? Alright, that's right. So the first one is Sinulog Festival. The place of origin for Sinulog Festival is Cebu City. Religious figure honored is Santo Nino and it is actually celebrated in the month of January. Next is Dinagyang Festival. It's from Iloilo City and it is done in honor to Santo Nino and uh, celebrated in the month of January. Also, we have Ati Atian Festival. It's actually from Calibo Aklan and it is also celebrated in honor to Santo Nino and also the month of celebration is January. Next is Peña Francia Festival. The place of origin is Bicol. Religious figure honored is Virgin Mary and month of celebration is September. Going through is Gigantes Festival of Angona Rizal and this is done in honor to Saint Clement and it is actually celebrated in the month of November. Next one is Longanisa Festival. It is from Vegan City, Ilocos Sur. Religious figure honored is Saint Paul and it is also celebrated in the month of January. 
we also have Kinabayo Festival from the Pitan City and it is celebrated for James the Great and uh, the month of celebration of this Kinabayo Festival is in the month of July. We also have Pintados de Pasi and uh, the place of origin is of course from Pintados City, Iloilo. This is celebrated in honor to Santo Nino and actually it is celebrated in the month of March. We also have Pataraday Festival and this is popular to Santiago City but I guess the festival now of Santiago City updating it is Balanban Festival. But to inform you about this, Patradai Festival of Santiago City before is in honor to Senor Santiago and celebrated in the month of May, which is summertime. And also, we have Sangyao Festival, a uh, place of origin is Tacloban City, and religious figure honored is still Santo Nino and celebrated in the month of July. And that's all for religious festivals. And now, let's go straight to secular festivals. But before that, let us first define secular festival. It is a festival celebrated as thanksgiving or celebration of people's industry and bountiful harvest. It is actually a non-religious festival. So definitely, it's a complete opposite of religious festival because this celebration is not actually for a religious icon but a celebration for a bountiful harvest and of course celebration of people's industry or people's successes. Yes. First festival to tackle about is Bangus Festival. Place of origin is of course the Gupan Pangasinan and uh, the industry or the product is milkfish and this is celebrated from April to May. Wow! So it's a month-long celebration. It's unique, you know. And also we have our very own Bambanti Festival here in Isabella. And this is in celebration of this scarecrow and it's celebrated, of course, in the month of January. We also have Mambangi Festival of City of Ilagan. And this is in celebration of the product corn and it is celebrated in the month of May. We also have Mango Festival. This is from Iba Zambales or Iba Zambales. I don't know how to pronounce this right but uh, bear with me. And this is of course in celebration with the mango industry or mango product. And also this is celebrated in the month of April. We also have Panagbunga Festival of Baguio City and this is in celebration for its popular flowers and also it is celebrated in the month of February. We also have Ibon Ebon Festival of Pampanga and this is in celebration of the product Migratory Bird Egg and uh, this is celebrated in the month of February just like Panagbunga Festival. And we also have Mascara Festival, of course, from Bacolod City, the City of Smile. And their product that they are featuring in this celebration is the mask or the sugar. So it's a two-way celebration. It's for the mask, for the face, and sugar for their product. And also, this is celebrated in the month of October. We also have Tinalak Festival from Coronadal, Cotabato and this is for the colorful abaca and uh, it is celebrated in the month of January. We also have Amungan Festival of Nueva Vizcaya. This is gathering of tribal industries and this is celebrated in the month of May. I have I've experienced teaching a Mungan festival and this is really fun celebration aside from Bambandi festival and this is really close to my heart. And also we have Binatbatan festival from Vegan Ilocos Sur and their industry is weaving and this is celebrated also in the month of May. And that's all for the festival dances here in the Philippines. 
we are really familiar with these festival dances by name because we can just hear them uh, from the television, over the radio, over the news. But we don't know if what the classification of these festival dances are. And now at least you have already known that there are two classifications of festival dances which are the religious and non-religious or secular festival dances. And you also knew about the industry or patron saint they are celebrating for and of course you have also known about what month they are being celebrated and now class for us to be more aware about festival dances since we are talking about dances we have to review the basic movements because you will be dancing as you keep in touch with this topic of course there are two types of movements class and that's that's right. So you have encountered this since you were elementary. So you are already familiar with locomotor and non-locomotor movements. Let us first discuss about locomotor movements. The first one is step. This is the basis of all locomotor movements. It prepares you to move in any direction you wish to go. It is defined as transfer of weight from one foot to the other. Next is walk. Series of steps executed by both of your feet alternately in any direction. Third is run. Series of walks executed quickly in any direction wherein only one foot stays on the ground while the other is off the ground. Fourth is jump. This movement is simply described by having both feet lose its contact with the ground. And now, let's proceed to non-locomotor movements. First is flexion. It is the act of decreasing the angle of a joint. Another term for flexion is to bend. Second, extension. You are extending if you are increasing the angle of a joint. Stretching is another word for extension. Third one is contraction. A muscle movement done when it shortens, narrows, and tightens using sufficient amount of energy in the execution. Fourth is release. A muscle movement opposite to contraction done when it let goes or let loses of being held into a shortening movement. Next one is collapse. To deliberately drop the exertion of energy into a body segment. Next is recover, the opposite of collapse. This is to regain the energy exerted into a body segment. And we also have rotation. To rotate is to move a body segment, allowing it to complete a circle with its motion. Rotation can also be done in wrists, waists, knees, and ankles. Next is twist. To move a body segment from an axis halfway front or back or a quarter to the right or left as in the twisting of the neck allowing the head to face right or left and the like. Next one is the pivot. To change the position of the feet or any body part that carries the body's weight allowing the body to face in a less than 360 degrees turn, that's pivot and the last one is turn to move in a turning movement with a base of support usually a pointed foot the other raised while equilibrium is maintained until the completion of the turn and those are the basic movements the locomotor and non-locomotor and now class, let us proceed to more complicated steps, but these are actually still basic steps, but they are more complicated and the basic movements that we have just discussed a while back are actually um, can be used in executing the basic 2-4 time folk dance steps. The first one is close step. The step pattern for close step is step right foot sideward that is counted as one and close step left to right that is counted as two 
we also have the blacking. The step pattern for blacking is step right in place that is counted as one and heel place left in front that is counted as two. We also have touch step. Step pattern for touch step is step right sideward that is counted as one and point left in front of right and that is counted as two. Walk. Step pattern for walk is it, this is just very basic because we do this every day. And uh, the step pattern for walk is step right forward that is counted as one and step left forward that is counted as two. Next one is change step that is more complicated than the others. The step pattern for this is step right that is counted as one. Close step left to right that is counted as N or the syncopated part and the third step is step right in place that is counted as 2. Next is cross change step, another syncopation. Mm -hmm. Step pattern for cross change step is cross right over left that is counted as 1, step left sideward and that is counted as end and step right in place counted as two next one is hop step the step pattern for hop step is step right sideward that is counted as one and hop right in place counted as two next one is mincing the step pattern for mincing is first point left in place that is counted as end before starting to step right in place that is counted as one so before the count one there is the end counting and also uh, point left in place is the next step and that is counted as n and the last step is step right in place and that is counted as two so the counting is and one and two that is still under two four times signature and also we have cross step the step pattern for cross step is step right across left that is counted as one and step left sideward left that is counted as two and we also have heel toe change step step pattern is heel place right sideward that is counted as one point left close to right counted as two and then change step with the right that will complete the figure this may be repeated with left so the counting is one two and then doing the change step it's one and two okay pop. so those are the basic dance steps in two four times signature and why do you have to study all of this? These are the basic movements or basic steps that you have to consider before making actually more complicated figures in street dancing or in festival dancing. So that's the significance of knowing all of these basic steps. And of course, to complete the set, we are going to identify as well the elements of movement in space. This is just basic, don't worry. First one is rhythm. Rhythm is a regular recurrence of a beat. Maybe slow, moderate, or fast. So you can say when you hear a music, you can be able to identify if it's slow, moderate, or fast. So basic movements should be in accordance to the rhythm of the music. This element of rhythm is called tempo. Next one is level. It refers to the level of movement. It's maybe high, especially those people at the back, and then medium level for the people at the center of the choreography, and low level for those people in front. So maybe if you have different heights with that of dancers, you may want to put your tallest dancer at the back and then shortest dancer maybe in front. So that's leveling. Next one is range. It refers to the scope of movement execution. So range is dictated by the space provided. 
So you may have minimal movement when you have minimal space and then larger, stronger movements when you have big space. And then we also have floor pattern or design. This refers to the designs created in the floor by the bodies of dances. It may be geometric or non-geometric. So this may be our, the formations of the dancers or the way the dancers are being staged or shaped in a particular stage or space. So that's floor pattern or a design. And uh, also we have direction. It adds to variety of movement. It may be forward, backward, sideward, and even upward. So this is a very basic direction. And also, the last one is focus. This refers to the focal point of dancer's attention while moving. So this depends upon the choreography set to them. Yes, but if you have a camera or video presentation, so you may want to face or be the camera as your focal point. So that's the focus of the dancers. And uh, that's all for today's discussion. And I hope that you have understood well the festival dances that we have in the Philippines the two types of festival dances and also the basic movements which are the locomotor and non-locomotor movements and also the basic dance steps for folk dances in two four time signature and also uh, i hope that you have learned the elements of movement in a space that well and for today's performance task you are going to create a simple festival dance routine and that is one to two minutes applying the two four time signature dance steps or you can make more creative step combinations. Dance with the music and record your performance through video. Pass your output to your teacher via Google Classroom. So I'll be waiting for that. And that's all for today's discussion grade 9. I hope that you have learned a lot from this lesson, festival dances. I hope that you can apply this in your day-to-day -day living. Applying the basic dance steps when you do dancing or when you do actually sports, you can be able to apply these dance steps as well. And I hope that this will actually uh, help you with your fitness and uh, make improve your healthy lifestyle and of course um, if you are new to my channel may I just request that uh, please subscribe and also ring the bell for you to be notified of new uploaded videos on my channel this has been Sir Les uh, saying let's dream and uh, make it happen so that's all for today and see you all on my next video thank you